Hey, hello, good afternoon, dear Swift learners. How are you all? I hope that you all are very safe and sound. And I, Ritika, am back with you, bringing with me another new session about metals and non-metals. Before that, we will be studying or we will be learning what is Swiftland all about and what are the things which are provided here. So Swiftland, it is India's most sincere learning destination wherein we provide the classes for grade 1 to grade 10. You will be having live and interactive classes over here in which you will be connecting with your teachers through audio and video calls and you will be taking your lessons. In every batch, there are maximum 6 students so that teachers can pay attention to every single kid. And yes, apart from teachers, we also have an academic mentor team. So what is their work? They will be helping you throughout your sessions if you get stuck anywhere. Plus, we also cover the syllabus as per your school exam schedule so that you can do very, very well there also. Now, there are some of the key features which make Swiftland very special. Like the first one is detailed progress report. So what will happen? In every two or two and a half months, you will be getting a report card which will be a kind of detailed analysis of what you have been doing. It will contain your homework performance, your classwork performance, your assessment performance, etc. And you will be getting a detailed analysis. Then we have Swiftland Academic Test Series wherein we can compete with the students of your age and you can see where, where do you stand, what are the things that you need to improve. Plus, you can also take unlimited practice test, which includes two categories, subjective and objective. So all these things, just book a free trial class and experience yourself. And please subscribe to the channel of SwiftLearn and press the bell icon so that you do not miss out on any update of chapters going on here. All right. So it's our fourth session of metals and non-metals in which we are going to primarily focus on metalloids and inert gases. All right. So in our last class, what we studied, we studied about metals, non-metals and alloys, right? So what are metals? Metals are having certain properties like they are lustrous, they are malleable, they are ductile. All right. And non-metals, they are, uh, you know, bad conductor of heat and electricity normally. They are non-malleable. They are non-ductile. They are non-lustrous. Okay. Next, let's study three uses of metals and non-metals. So metals, they are used in making utensils. They are used in making bridges such as iron. They are used in making jewelries. Plus non-metals here, we are uh, using them like, for example, nitrogen, it is used as fertilizers. Oxygen, we are used for, uh, we are using it for breathing, all right. Uh, graphite, it is used as lubricant. Now, right now, there are about 115 elements which are known, okay. And 92 out of them, they are occurring naturally. So, normally, uh, mostly all the uh, elements, they were discovered by the late 1800s. We have four categories of elements, which are metals, non-metals, metalloids, and inert gases. So we have already studied a lot about metals and non-metals, right? So today we are going to focus on metalloids and inert gases. So what are metalloids? When we take a metal and when we mix it with a non-metal, it will form what is known as metalloid. So how can we define metalloid? Metalloids, they are those elements whose properties, they fall between metals and non-metals. Okay, so the properties lie between metals and non-metals. And some of the examples of metalloids are germanium, arsenic, antimony, bismuth, boron, silicon, etc. So these are the elements whose properties lie in the middle of metal and non-metal. Now let us see some of the physical properties of metalloids. First is appearance. So they have a kind of shiny surface which is normally in the metals, right? Then talking about their elasticity, so they are brittle, means they can break easily which happens normally in non-metals. So you can see their properties sometimes they are lying, uh, mostly they are lying between metals and non-metals. Their electrical conductivity is intermediate to good, like not very bad and not very good. It lies in the middle. 
Now let us see some of the metalloids and their uses. First of all, boron. So boron is used to produce borosilicate glass, which is used in our laboratories for making test tubes, beaker, flask, etc. It is also used in um, nuclear reactors as control rods. Plus, it is also used as fire retardant and insecticides. So, boron has these particular uses. Next, silicon. So, it is a semiconductor which has many electronic devices uses. Okay. So, in electronic device, silicon is very, very important. So, it is used in making the chips. It is used in making computer, solar cell, LED sc uh, LCD screen, etc. Okay, so silicon, it is again very important in semiconductor industry. Then silicon, it is also used in firework and explosives. It is used in pottery and enamel. We are also using in making temperature waxes and greases. Now, talking about silicon gel. So what does it do? It absorbs the moisture. Okay, so we are applying it to burnt patients because it has this property to absorb the moisture. Next, use of germanium. So germanium, it is used in angle camera lenses and microscopic lenses. It is also used in calces, like we have calculators, we have uh, transistors, uh, solar panels and computers. So transistor, again, it is... Uh, a uh, very important thing which is used in semiconductor industry okay so here also germanium is very important next is use of arsenic so arsenic it is used in treating cancer plus it is also used to preserve the food from various uh, bacteria or fungi or insecticides next arsenic it is used to uh, you know strengthen the alloy of copper and lead okay which are used to make car batteries so we are adding arsenic here to make it more strong use of antimony so antimony it is used in uh, seat covers of aircrafts or automobiles they are also used uh, the alloys of antimony they are also used in making the bullet or cable sheathing again in electronic devices uh, in semiconductors antimony has a great use and it is also used as, as an antiparasitic drug next use of tellurium so tellurium it is used to increase the ductility of stainless steel and copper so it is used in uh, this mixture of steel and copper to increase their ductility it is also used to reduce this uh, corrosion rate in metals so it reduces corrosion and it is very effective very good in solar panels as a semiconductor it is also used in tinting glass okay and uh, ceramic things uh, ceramic it uh, we are having cups and all so tellurium is used there and it is again used in semiconductor electricity as electronic devices now talking about a gas which floats in air like which balloon will float in air it is the helium balloon okay they will start floating in the air so helium why does the balloon float in air because helium is very light than air okay and it is inert gas now what do we mean by inert gas the gases that do not react chemically with other elements are known as inert gases they are also known as noble gases so we are having many inert gases okay and they are very uh, less available in the air they are available in traces so some of the examples of inert gases are helium neon argon krypton xenon and radon so these are the inert gases which are present on the earth okay what are metalloids the metalloids are the substances whose property lie between metals and non-metals okay so they are having some of the property of metal metals and some of the properties of non-metals list the use of any three metalloids so metalloids they have many use especially in semiconductor electricity uh, semiconductor industry I'm sorry so it is used to make LCD it is used for making calculator screen it is used to make computers it is used in uh, greasing it is used in uh, lighting it is used uh, uh, in ceramic uh, substances right so uh, metalloids have many uses next is what is inert gas so the gas which doesn't react with any other metal non-metal or any other substance with it, that is inert gas and it is also known as noble gas so example are helium xenon radon krypton etc so these are some of the noble gases 
okay fun facts say that neon signs do not use uh, just neon gas so we the uh, sign boards which shine at the uh, night so they are not just using this neon gas but it is actually a mixture of various noble gases okay and that is what create bright lights which are uh, visible in darkness also helium is the second most common element in the universe uh, but it is very rare so as i told you the noble gases are very Uh, less available they are available in traces but it is very common now challenge of the day says that c is the greatest source of halogens come in so uh, c is greatest source of halogen why because some of the seaweed they contain uh, a- approximately 0.5% of iodine uh, as sodium iodide next talking about the sea water uh, the sea water contains uh, the uh, chloride bromide or iodide of various things such as sodium potassium calcium so these all lead to the halogens okay so that is why c is known to be the greatest source of halogen now let's play an activity to see what we have learned today dash is used in production of borosilicate glass which is used to make test tube beaker flask etc so it is boron is arsenic used in chemotherapy so we just now saw that it is used to treat cancer so yes and dash balloon floats in the air so helium because helium is lighter than air so that is why helium balloon float in the air okay so let us see what are the things that we have learned today we learned about metalloids and inert gases so it was a very very short session which gave us a brief quick revision about metalloids and inert gases i hope that you might have understood every single thing in today's chapter we will be meeting in next class in which we will be taking more lessons on many many things and if you have missed out on previous sessions please go to swiftlan channel the videos are listed there please go and see them and also book your trial class on swiftlan thank you let's meet in the next class